News Radio 840 WHAS. Good Sunday morning. Good Thanksgiving Sunday morning. I'm Bob Sokolder, and this is the Louisville Real Estate Show. Here with you to the top of the hour. We hope your Thanksgiving day went well, and this holiday weekend for a lot of people is also going well with us from their prospective homes, one of them out of the Kentucky area. Uh, Brad Lawler, who's owner of Home Team Inspection Service and Team Bug Out. And you can reach Brad and his team at 844-411-TEAM. You're coming to us from Idaho. I'm coming to you from Boise, Idaho today, Boise, Bob. Yeah. Idaho. All right, good. Um, with his family. And then also Chuck Crosby, Crosby Law Offices. And uh, Chuck does a variety of things, including wills and powers of attorney. And he's coming to us from his home where he's had a big dinner. Uh, you can reach Chuck at 499-6360. And how was, how was your uh, Thanksgiving feast? Chuck, good? It was 30 people good. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a big cook. Big four group. turkeys and... Uh... Anyhow, yeah, lots Ooh. of turkey. All right, yeah, and I did. I uh, I smoked two turkeys on my uh, grill, my big green egg. Mm. So, and I'm Bob Sakola. I own the Sakola team, Louisville Remax Properties East, and uh, we do a lot of closings and a lot of uh, sales from getting buyers into homes. And if you're thinking about selling or buying this year or next year or beyond, I'd love to be able to help you along with my team. But if it's selling, I will come out personally. We'll talk about the procedure, the plan. And uh, we'll take you step by step. It's free, no obligation for us to talk and, uh, and get that to you. You can reach me anytime on my cell phone at 502-376-5483 or go to bobsellslouisville.com. All right, we've got a lot of stuff. Uh, Chuck, we're going to start with an update uh, from, and we've been dealing with condo balcony problems, if you uh, listen to the yes. show. There seems to be a lot of these. And this one comes from Chris who sent us an email, and it may sound familiar. He owns a condo in a building where the balconies have problems. He's been assessed more than $10,000 to the replacement of his balcony in the building, and each of the other owners are having the same similar, if not more, assessment, he says. He's supposed to have the money in by the beginning of December, December 1, but as of the moment, there's no contract. There's no start date for the work and no finish date for the work or itemization of what the work would entail. And several residents have asked for a meeting with the board. The board president refuses to grant a meeting. So time is running out. Chris wants to know what should he do at this point, Chuck? Well, at this point, uh, you know, if they make an assessment, they are able to get that money prior to. Now, whether that's a valid assessment would depend on the uh, HOA rules. Has somebody actually taken a look at them and see if they properly made that assessment? But if the assessment was properly made, then it needs to be paid or a lien or other action can be taken. However, if you think they are just doing it incorrectly, that they're playing fast and loose with the money, well, then you get an attorney. And uh, if that uh, if the HOA won't give the information, then you can force them to do it. Uh, it's pretty obvious. It's a homeowners association. It's not a, an ad hoc government telling you what to do. Uh, so there are there are things you can do. Now, I know the guys that uh, uh, play in that uh, particular uh, field. Uh, yeah. So just have them give me a call. I'll okay. pass them on to the guys that do that particular sort of thing. And that's the best advice we could probably give you. And incidentally, if you want to see a replay of this show, which has a lot of information, this and others, you can go to LouisvilleAnswers.com. That's LouisvilleAnswers.com. And that is our YouTube channel. It will uh, repeat. The video will be up there along with the um, the audio. A reminder also, coming up later in the show, we've got the best home improvements to increase the value of your home, whether it's you're going to sell it or live in it. We, we've got those coming up. All right. We're moving into a little bit of a different field right now. I accumulate a lot of questions over the years. and some of them are, are very unusual. Uh, this case, we're going to ask both uh, Chuck over at Chuck Crosby Law Offices and Brad over at Home Team Inspection Services to give us some of the more unusual things on this Thanksgiving day that we're all happy that this doesn't happen on a regular basis. Got it? That's the premise. So here is, uh, we start with um, with Brad. Unusual home inspection finds, and I've got some from friends around the country well, have you got any that you could uh, you were able to talk about off the top of your head from Idaho? Oh boy, oh boy, there yeah, there are there are lots and lots uh, of them. Where do I start? Um, you know, there for the home inspectors, there's that that four letter F word that uh, is called flip that yeah. uh, we all love so dearly. I have lots and lots of flip horror stories, but I think the 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 one that I would probably remember the most was a young investor 
had a little bit of money set aside and decided to buy a home uh, on a tax sale in the uh, the west end of Louisville. And a uh, smart guy, I, I'm sure he had a great plan going in, but he hired us to come out and do a mold inspection on this house. So hmm. I got out there and the, the first thing we had to take down the four by eight sheet of plywood uh, that was functioning as the front door, took that down, um, walked in, the house was pretty much falling apart, found out at that time that he had paid uh, $15,000 for this property. Um, other homes along the street, uh, none, none of them have been um, renovated yet. Mm. Uh, pretty much everything's run down. But the, I'm looking around going, wonder why he's wanting a mold test on this. So I did some other uh, investigation before I started any of the mold testing, found more than two feet of water in the uh, in the cellar, found a number of just just looking at it, not in, you know inspecting the home itself, but found a number of, of cracked um, main uh, floor joists from the main beams. Uh, several had been cut. And I just, you know, asked the guy, you know, what it, what his intention was. And he, he said that he had done some running of numbers and figured that he could renovate this entire house for $3,000. Oh boy. Oh. And I'm looking at this. So it ended up being a, a conversation that took probably 45 minutes to an hour on site, kind of talking uh, some other things, but <clears throat> a long story short, he opted not to do the mold test, rightly so don't, don't waste money on that for a home that probably ended up getting bulldozed back into the, uh, into the mm. wet hole that was below it, but felt bad for him. You know, he'd done a lot of research, but I think that's one that's probably very memorable. We've been, you know, really thankful over the years to have done some pretty spectacular homes, you know, for, for local celebrities and others, um, just people that, you know, have big houses and many of them are very memorable. Uh, some of the historic properties that we've done, 140, 150 year old properties, those are always memorable. But yeah, I think anytime the the bad ones, they always involve some sort of a flip, you know, so. All right, we move over to Chuck Crosby. I've got a, a showing, but as a buyer agent, I'll tell you in a bit, but go ahead, Chuck, what were some of the unusual closings that you've had to deal with? Well, let's see. How about chairs being thrown? <laughs> um, we Which had one, a... From who to who? Um, <laughs> yeah. follow yeah. me here. Yeah. Uh, we have a three back to backs. So a is buying from B who buys from C who buys from D. Okay. We're at D at this point and D stands for divorce. Um, it's a very large gentleman, uh, I'd say about six foot five, about three foot wide. And, uh, he wasn't drunk, but he'd had a drink or two and he's okay. sitting there and he and wife, who was this, uh, uh, small slip of a lady, uh, sitting next to him. He, uh, he tells her, I want all the money cut in half right now. Well, I can't do that. They're getting a divorce. I don't know how the judge is going to cut it up. Uh, so, you know, I explained to him the different ways we can handle it. And he wasn't happy with that. So she made a comment. He always did mess things up. So he just brushed some pens off at her. Mm. Uh, and that wasn't good enough. So he stood up and he tossed the chair at her. Um, then he heads out the door. <laughs> It's like, okay, what are we going to do? Here? So I can't tackle the guy. Uh, so I just go outside with him and, and uh, I talk him down off the ledge. Uh, you know, could be things were said about his wife. And, I'm, you know, people, if you don't argue with them, they think you agree. So I let him go under that. So I get him back into the room. I get his signatures. He's out of there. Okay, closings go through because if you hadn't signed, you know, none of the closing worked. And, you know, you got three sets of families that are, don't, you know, have what they need. Right. That's not the crazy part. No. OK, mm -hmm. the crazy part is the loan officer is sitting down at the end of the table. And uh, uh, after the gentleman left, he looks over to the uh, young soon to be ex-wife and he says, hey, you want to go out for some drinks later? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Tackiest that's... thing I ever saw in my life. Wow. Uh, she, of course, turned him down. But uh -huh. uh, uh, that gentleman, uh, yeah, he threw me for a loop on that one. That's interesting. As a as a buyer agent, the most, and I'm in it almost uh, 19 and a half years, the most unusual thing that I had ever dealt with. And there's a bunch of them, but one of the ones that goes to the top was I was showing uh, a home to a couple of uh, a family. Um, we were going through the house. Now, in the basement, there was a large bear, stuffed bear. So we didn't think so much of that. But then we worked our way up to the second floor. We opened a door to one of the kids' bedrooms. And on the bunk bed, there had to be between the, the top bunk and the bottom bunk. And then on top of the dresser, 
at least 20 deer heads that had been <laughs> mounted. Yeah. Scared the bejeebers out of my clients and me, quite frankly. Um, apparently, the agent must have told them to take all the deer heads down and put them somewhere, but he didn't tell them where to put them and putting them in a kid's room on bunk beds. I'm not sure that was the exact uh, way to go. All right, we're going to keep going forward here. We've got other stuff. We'll get back to a bunch of these unusual things because we've got lists of them uh, in future shows. Uh, Kevin, uh, this is going to Brad Lawler over at Home Team Inspection. Kevin's been looking for a home for 12 months. He's put offers in on several homes, but home inspections on the homes he's found they find things like water damage, trains that lead to nowhere. I guess he means drains mm -hmm. that lead to nowhere. A mysterious underground stream and a bathtub draining into a basement. In all cases, the sellers were unwilling to make repairs. So Kevin is wondering, are there any other unusual inspection problems that we've found in our experience, in your experience, Brett, that another home buyer should look out for? And this may be a couple of five or so that if you come up with that, they should keep an eye out for. Um, I think any of the homes that have knob and tube wiring hmm. left in them, I think that's something that has been problematic. And that's probably the 1920s. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. before. Yeah. A lot of those have been uh, de-energized, deactivated. Uh, but mm -hmm. I know insurance companies have some some challenges with those when you find them. So we always report it, but we don't know. You know, it can be re-energized later, uh, which is how sometimes when we inspect a home with knob and tube that the uh, that they've been re-energized. So that's that's probably something to be aware of. Um, some of the homes in the areas that are built on the side of hills that have had significant retaining walls or significant uh, structural uh, uh, peering, uh, in particular, uh, adjustments that have been made, uh, repairs have been made to those homes. I think those can be uh, problematic because you never really know if they're still moving. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's one. Yeah, you're right. I think any home that's on a crawl space just becomes a question mark if the if the sellers hasn't gone into them. And a lot of sellers don't. I mean, homeowners don't typically go into their crawl spaces, but we find a lot of things in crawl spaces people weren't aware of. Just like you say, the, the bathtubs leaking straight into the crawl space, toilets that are leaking into a crawl space, raw sewage under them. Um, that's a common thing. A lot of um, attics that have animals um, in them, raccoons, squirrels, bats, uh, those those we run across. So it's, you know, people just need to, to have somebody if they're not willing to go into those spaces, you know, uh, you know, once or twice a year, just to kind of take a look, hire somebody who will mm -hmm. um, just go in and, and take a look because that's those those are kind of the biggest surprises. Um, I think any home that has been vacant for a period of time also can become a, a challenge, whether it's um, you know, water lines that break, creating mold problems uh, down the road, or you know the uh, the drain lines that end up getting clogged up uh, with tree roots because there's no no water uh, mm -hmm. and solids flowing through them. Those uh, vacant homes can be a, a challenge as well. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, the best home improvements to increase the value of your home, whether you're looking to sell now or down the road. Continuing with us, we've got Chuck Crosby. He is the head guy at the Crosby Law Offices. You can reach him at 499-6360. Also, Brad Lawler, the head guy over at Home Team Inspection Services, and also Team Bug Out to get rid of pests. Not the neighbor kind. I'm talking about mm -hmm. the ones that crawl. 844-411-TEAM is his number. You can reach me, Bob Sikoler, if you're thinking about selling or buying into this year or next year or beyond. Love to come out, talk to you, free. Uh, no obligation analysis. We'll talk about the path. You can reach me at 376-5483, or you can go to bobsellslouisville.com. We're back in a moment on News Radio 840 WHAS. News Radio 840 WHAS, Bob Sekoler, the Louisville Real Estate Show with you until the top of the hour. Continuing with us, Brad Lawler, owner of Home Team Inspection Service and Team Bug Out. You can reach Brad and Home Team at 844-411-TEAM. Also, Chuck Crosby, the owner of the Crosby Law Offices. Not only do they do closings, because you can pick the closing attorney that you want. Also, Chuck does wills and powers of attorney. Foreclosure, defense, commissioner sale, and a whole lot more. You can reach Chuck on his uh, phone at 499-6360. I'm Bob Sikoler. You can reach me if you're thinking about selling this year, next year, or buying. Uh, we can help you. I can come out free, no obligation, analysis, planning to give you an idea of what your home is worth and also what the uh, the market looks like and what the plan would be to get the house sold now or beyond. You can reach me at 376-5483 or go to bobsellslouisville.com. 
All right. And by the way, thank you, Barbara Corcoran. She's our mentor. She's a friend and uh, she endorses us here in Louisville and around the country. And we appreciate that. So many of us are not going to be moving. The interest rates are, by the way, coming down a bit. In case you didn't hear, applications for purchase mortgages surged last week as mortgage rates hit their lowest levels in two months, with rates continuing to trend down this week as the bond market investors digest data that shows inflation is cooling and the most mortgage rates in the survey decreased a 30-year fixed uh, on the average about 7.41 percent but i did hear late this past week that uh, they, there was one that emerged at 6.99 percent so that's a that's good news keep an eye on that folks that's going to be a key indicator but until you're waiting a lot of people are waiting till the rates come down into this in the mid sixes or even fives before they even think about putting their home on the market among the people i talk to anyway you'll probably be staying in your house so if you're going to make some renovations let's talk about the ones that you want to make that should probably be the ones that you would make for the most improvement in the value of your home there's a 2023 cost versus value report that's out and if you ever want to send me an email to get more information on this bob at we sell louisville.com and then just put uh, cost versus value report in the email so the number one thing that you can replace and this actually has come up before is a garage door the cost to replace the average garage door and i believe they're talking about a, a two-car garage four thousand three hundred and two dollars if you resell you'll get four thousand four hundred eighteen dollars back you recoup 102 percent on a 0.7 102.7 percent on the garage door when you resell and again remember this is a, a cost versus value by the home remodelers industry so they have a vested interest in this things like entry door replacement you'll get back 100 percent manufactured stone veneer if you put on your home you'll get 102 percent sliding re siding replacement vinyl you'll only get back 94 percent of what you've spent um, minor kitchen remodel the uh, cost may be twenty to thirty thousand. You only get back eighty-five percent. Window replacement, vinyl windows recoup sixty-eight percent. Bathroom model sixty-six percent. Window replacement, wood window replacement sixty-one percent, and a roof replacement sixty-one percent. But there are providers that go along with this, and I'd love to talk to you about it. So feel free to give me a call, and we can talk more about that down the road. All right, we go back to our questions. This is going over to Chuck Crosby of the Crosby Law Offices. So Chuck. Nicole lives in Jefferson County and uh, in a subdivision there and she here actually and she sent us an email saying her homeowners association wants to require that she become a member of their new garbage pickup. She's wondering can the HOA require her to use their garbage service? Any thoughts? That uh you know, I don't I don't know of any subdivision uh uh, documents that I've seen that actually would necessarily allow or make that a, a requirement. Hmm. Uh, again, you have to look at the the documents that set it up to see what they have. And it may be that uh, everybody has to participate to get a particular rate. Uh, so, you know, there may be some arm twisting going on. Yeah. But uh, when you when you sign your deed, you agree to the documents that are in existence. Uh, if that's not comporting with those documents, then they can't make you do it. It's as you know, easy as that. Um, best way to go about it is give me a call. We'll look up your uh, the HOA uh, uh, deeds of restrictions, the covenants and all that kind of stuff and uh, see if it's in there. Would you say it's easier now than ever before to get those restrictions are online for the most part? They charge. For yeah, those, most though, parts. Um, well, you know, they charge you for that oh. Uh, oh. because you're a prof yeah, because you're in the industry. Oh. Um, most of the, uh, if you're in a subdivision, uh, you should be able to get a hold of that. Now, most of those docs are going to be recorded. Some of them not. Uh, if there's an HOA, uh, uh, management company, usually if you're a member, they'll hand them right over to you. For instance, uh, my HOA, they're all online. You just look them up. They're right there. Interesting. All right. That's yeah. good. Hopefully that, um, um, helps and gives you some direction. A reminder, if you want to see what sellers and buyers are saying about us, we really do value the reviews. And everybody should always check the reviews of a company or anything you're going to buy, especially like Amazon has all the reviews up there. Some of them may or may not be verified, but there are the reviews I'm going to tell you to look at. They're all verified. You can't fool these groups. Uh, LouisvilleZillow.com or LouisvilleGoogle.com. They're pretty strict on who is able to re leave a review. They verify it's a real person so and a real seller or buyer. So that's LouisvilleZillow.com, LouisvilleGoogle.com. Amy sent us an email. Uh, this is going over to Brad over at the Home Team Inspection. Apparently, she has always loved TV shows and books based around castles. 
She is in the market to buy a home that has, you ready for this, a moat around it. Mm -hmm. She knows it's rare, but she's wondering, is there a higher insurance cost or other problems she might actually endure if she finds a home with a moat or is able to create a moat around a home that she purchases? Interesting. Right. Yeah, that is an interesting question. I don't know about the insurance costs. I would imagine there's something just if you've got a body of water. Uh, of course, the biggest challenge probably for that is going to be to you know do whatever sort of excavation that she wants to do, essentially in order mm -hmm. to make a giant you know koi pond. Yeah. Um, you know, in in her yard. So I mean, you know, I would imagine that you know pond builders would be the ones to uh, to talk to about that. Uh, just as far as making sure that she's not impacting the structure of the home uh the foundation of the home if you will trying to get it uh you know too very close i don't know how romantic of a vision she has for a moat if it's right up against the you know the foundation walls that might be problematic but if it's you know far enough removed you know where it's not going to affect the the foundation of the home then she may be fine just it's just how the water is going to flow uh, away from the house and just got to manage that that part of it. it has to move away from the foundation and Chuck, I would say if she's looking at a house that's in a homeowner association or under the guise of one, she needs to really make sure that they're allowed to do that, correct? Yeah, that they're yeah, that that would probably be a, a non-starter for most HOAs. Yeah, gotta care, be very careful. We move back over to Chuck Crosby, Crosby Law Offices. And Chuck Robin writes in that she is one of four kids who inherited the house from her parents. Now, both Robin and her brother are co-executor slash executrixes for the estate. Now, the sisters, over one, has put it on the market and is helping to sell it, except one of the sisters has put a lien on the property, claiming that she wants the, they, they've got a, an already a contract on the house. But now they want to lien, this one sister is putting a lien on it, but she wants the price to be raised $200,000. And she notes parenthetically that the contract on the house has already been appraised for value of what they have it listed for. So she's wondering, can this be done? Robin is asking. Also, is the sister just trying to stop the sale of the home? Can the sister hold this up with putting a lien on the house? Oh, not for long and not without consequence. Oh. Um, the thing is, you have to have a right to file a lien. Now, the county clerk, they just, they'll, they'll record whatever you've got. I mean, there are a million stories of the drunken bricklayer who gets mad at the general contractor who files a mechanics lien at, you know, the day before a close. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to take care of it. Well, if it's obviously a bogus lien, okay, mm -hmm. then yeah. you can uh, do what they call bonding over. Okay, you can get an insurance company to bond over that issue and then you move forward. Uh, in this particular case, uh, it would depend on how the will's written. If the house was specifically devised to the kids, uh, well, then she's going to have to sign a deed and there's just no way around that. So she can hold it up just not by, by not signing. Mm. Uh, if it wasn't devised to the children, um, then, uh, you know, presumably the uh, estate can sell it if they have full power of sale. The problem is now there's a couple of cases out there yeah. that if if you're a uh, purchaser, uh, a bona fide purchaser for value without notice of a beneficiary's claim, then there's no big deal. But if she's filing a lien, that's notice of some sort of complaint. So it's going to hold it up as long as it takes for the executor or the executrices to uh, get this in front of a judge and hammer it all out. What's the time frame for getting in front of a judge at this point, Chuck? It depends. Usually uh, you make a motion. Uh, you're going to get a motion hour the next week, provided you do it um, by the proper time, which is noon on Thursday. Right. Um, you can get it on for the next Monday. But the judge probably won't hear the issue at that point. Uh, they'll roll it to a hearing. And hearings um, last I checked a couple of weeks out, uh, and then the judge isn't necessarily going to rule immediately. Mm. Okay, uh, it'll it'll go when the judge says so, and that's about the best you can tell someone. I guess you're right. We move back to Brad Lawler, Home Team Inspection. Andre writes us an email saying that he's read that rats have won. I guess you need to take on your uh, team bug out hat. Um, he's hearing that the rats are exploding across uh, the globe, and uh, he's wondering. How bad is the problem in Louisville and southern Indiana? Is there anything that can be done to prevent rat, rat population from expanding in our area? Yeah, good good question. Uh, yeah. We are not seeing quite the explosion that they are in places that we read about, like New York City. Um, yeah. But I will say that certainly the rodent uh, the rodents have been active this fall. 
Um, a lot of our clients who are on general pest are adding uh, monitoring stations uh, that we're putting, you know, outside their homes just to make sure that, you know, they're not getting in. So the the biggest things you can do, there's, there's two things. One is sanitation because the rats are coming. Um, they're looking for food and any, any access that they have to the house uh, they're, they're going to, they're going to get in. So that what you got to do is get, keep everything clean, no trash outside, no food, you know, no open garbage cans out in your yard. And then for the house, you have to make sure that all of the small gaps and holes are filled, what they call exclusion. So we're doing a lot of that work where we're just going in with materials and sealants, sealing those holes up to keep the mice and rats out of the house. Tree limbs that hang over the house, that hang over the roof, the, the mice and rats and squirrels are making access that way. So you want to make sure that you've got, you know, the trees cut away from the house. Uh, so there are steps you can take to keep to keep those rodents out of the house, but it's not so much, you know, rodenticides. It's not so much traps that you need. It's work on the outside of the house and keeping things tidied up out there that will keep, you know, the rodents out of your house. But if you, if they do have a problem, you're going to want to call somebody to uh, as quickly as possible so that you can put those, those other, you know, actions into place like trapping uh, and monitoring the activity of those rodents. We'll talk more about this in the future because we are out of time. A reminder, though, if you want to hear what sellers are saying about us, I do a lot of interviews at closings. You can go to LouisvilleSellersTalk.com. That's LouisvilleSellersTalk.com. Our thanks to Chuck Crosby, the owner of the Crosby Law Offices, who they do a lot of work, including a great job at closing your loan. You can pick the closing attorney you want. And Chuck also does wills, powers of attorney, commissioner sales, foreclosure defense, and a variety of other things. You can reach Chuck at his office at 499-6360. Also, we thank Brad Lawler, owner of Home Team Inspection Service and Team Bug Out. You can reach Brad and his group. They come in as a team. You can reach them at 844-411-TEAM. And if you're thinking of selling your home, we would love to help you uh, either now or next year or the beyond. A free, no obligation visit by me. I come out, we discuss, we come up with a plan. And maybe down the road, you call me when you're ready to sell. You can reach me anytime on my cell phone, 376-5483, or go to bobsellslouisville.com. We're out of time. See you next Sunday on News Radio 840 WHAS.